specter of our faith. All of the heroes found in chapter 11 inspire us, but an even greater hero is our supreme example, Jesus Christ. And we look unto Jesus. When we look unto others, they will fail us. We've all had that experience when we look to someone and they let us down, they fail us. But when we look unto Jesus, he will never fail us. He is always our supreme example. The Old Testament men and women did not have the privilege to look unto Jesus. They were anticipating the Messiah, the Savior to come. But they never ever saw him. All the people that we read about in Hebrews 11 never saw Jesus. We have the wonderful privilege of looking back and seeing the life of Jesus and seeing how he lived and of his, his, uh, his um, amazing example and his gift of life for us through his death on the cross. Well, they lived and died without having received the promise of the coming Christ. But we have the privilege of looking at the life of Christ and marvel at his endurance and his faith because he led the way. Jesus left the splendors of heaven. He abandoned those so that he could come to earth. And he refused earth, earth's honors when he was here. On Palm Sunday, for instance, he endured a constant opposition from people. He went to the cross, a place of shame and agony that's reserved for the worst of criminals. Yet he had done no wrong. That is Christ, our Lord and Savior, who gave his life for us. Yet his faith, Jesus believed that his obedience and his sacrifice would provide salvation for the entire world, for every person who lives in Urbana, who lives in Illinois, who lives in the U.S., who lives anywhere in the world. He gave his life for all. And we celebrate the one who made the way. And so for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. He scorned its shame. And so we look to Jesus because he is our supreme example. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And because that's true, we don't complain about the racetrack that he has for laid out for us, the race he has laid out for us. Our name is on a lane, as it were. Our course is marked out for us. And we have a ministry, an important one, to be a part of. On the track before us, however, we'll see, in fact, the nail-scarred footprints of Christ because he does go before us. He's out ahead. He leads the way. And because he's running the race with you, he is there to help you. So be encouraged. All the saints are cheering you on. Christ is victorious. It's him that we celebrate. He's been exalted to the highest place of honor. Is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. He is interceding for you and for me before the Father, even now. Today, the Lord Jesus is praying for each of us here. And we give glory to him and thanks to him. And knowing this should keep us from fainting or from growing weary. And as we hear this word, God's word, it should call up fresh resources for us to say we will keep on keeping on. We will complete the race with his help and his strength. And we will be determined to invite others into the race because he is worthy. You know, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But the question is, is when will they do it? Will they do it now, before they die, or at the judgment seat of Christ? And our assignment is to help everyone to know that they can do it now. They can give their life to Christ. I want to close to, by saying that Marilyn and I were in India since I was last here for 18 days. <clears throat> and I want to tell you about one of our days. 
One day we flew from Hyderabad to Vizag, which is a city on the east side of India, right on the Bay of Bengal. We then took about a three-hour drive up into the mountains. I mean hairpin turns way up into the mountains. And it was an amazing and beautiful part of God's creation. We went there to actually meet some Christian uh, believers. About 20 years ago, Bishop Gallipoli had actually sent missionaries into that area from the Free Methodist Church now that they're a part of us. And it was just amazing to be there and see this group of people. Um, in, about tw in about 12 years, they had established 20 churches in villages. And these villages were really being transformed by the power of God. Lives were being transformed. Whole communities were being transformed. He said it was the first time that he had taken any Caucasians into that area. It was a real blessing to be there. When we arrived, there was a group of maybe 20 ladies and about 15 men who were doing a welcome dance for us at the village. Marilyn got so excited about it, she joined in. I wish I could show you the video of her enjoying this celebration as we arrived at this village. We had gone to this particular village because a church in Canada, where my son attends, was actually providing funds to build them a church building. They did not have a building. In fact, there are now 27 churches in this area, and of the 27 churches, this was the fourth one now to get a building. The rest of them are just under poles and thatched roofs or in homes or other places. But this was going to be a tremendous help to them. So we went to see this development that was happening, to worship with them, to share the word, to see what God was doing. Others had provided some funds to help them. You know, the ladies in that village for 50 years now had walked every day, more than once a day, I'm sure many of them, up a mountain quite high up to be able to get water and then carried it down on jugs on their head on the way back down. And that was their daily requirement to have the water, clean water needed for their family and for their fields and whatever. But Blue Water, which is a group of free methods people have helped make this happen, was that provided actually some wonderful resources so they could actually pipe now that water, all of that, down to their village. And there was a wonderful big tank filled with just clear as beautiful water. Their rice paddies were growing. I mean, it was just literally um, sort of um, community transformation happening because of the power of God and the love of these people and helping them in their, in their growth and all. I share that with you to simply say that um, I wish you could see the joy of Christ in their hearts and in their lives as they worshipped and as we shared with them the transformation that was happening in that community because they heard of Christ. They had entered the race that was set before them. They were laying aside the sins that were uh, binding them. They were in fact um, getting in and seeing what it means to endure and to grow in their walk with Christ. And they were following after the foots of, footsteps of Jesus, their supreme example. And they were uh, in essence living out in a fresh way. Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith. It was an honor to be there. All around the world, thousands of people every day are coming to faith in Christ and discovering what Christ can do to transform a heart and life and make a huge difference, not only for this generation, but for generations to come. Jesus came that we might experience that fullness of life. And in him we celebrate that today. May his name be praised. Amen. Amen.